Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I hope y'all have had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Um, and I know we're all watching the storm victims, and I call them victims because they are victims over in um, the Bahamas. I remember me and my sister actually took a trip to the Bahamas when her kids were really little. And I was single and she was married and I said, I, I'm going to pull you away from the house, go to the Bahamas with me. And she went with me. And those were the sweetest people that I've ever been uh, around as far as, you know, just going to a different place. And I really enjoyed the people there. And I feel so sad that they've endured this um, terrible storm for way too long already. Um, my speaker is over here beeping at me. Let me turn it off. Or did it just go off? I think it went off. Um, but anyway, so I know that luckily that storm has finally picked up a little bit of speed and is going up the coast. And it looks to me like hopefully it's going to stay out over the water for the most part. And um, that is a blessing. And maybe by the time it does continue on up to the Carolinas, it won't be quite as strong. So, of course, we all have everyone in the path of the storm in our prayers, and um, it's something to watch. And I just feel so sorry for those over there in the Bahamas. They're already poor, and now they just about don't have anything. So, um, we also want to mention all the 34 people that lost their lives on the boat um, that was a diving boat. That is the terrible way to lose a, a loved one while they're on vacation, but out on a diving boat. So, um, I heard one guy say the guy that runs that boat normally gets up at four in the morning to make breakfast, and the fire supposedly broke out about three o'clock, so it just caught them all off guard, I guess. Um, but anyway, with that said, I've had a long weekend, and it was nice. May was home, and that was nice. Um, our dishwasher tore up today, and so we are actually ordering, uh, we just ordered a new dishwasher, and it will not be delivered until Monday. So I will be washing dishes the old-fashioned way, just like I do when I go down to the beach. Uh, and me and Chris had thought about going down there, but the weather is going to be 96 to 99 degrees this week and I told him I said Chris there's really no reason for me to go because it's just too hot so um, we're probably going to go next week some and then the week of the 16th he'll have his uncle and his dad there fishing and I will be in Georgia but with that said um, I've been thinking a lot about how I do my Bible studies and I know they're just kind of random and I think a lot of people do watch it, but there's really no order in the way I do it. And any time I've ever tried to go strictly by a book, there's something that I miss or don't do. Or, And I'm I'm be honest with you, this is a Bible study that, you know, I'm going to do when I feel like I'm led to come in here and do it. So on days that, not just that, but on days that I'm busy or we wind up going out to dinner or, you know, we have company stop by or I'm with my girls or whatever the reason may be, I'm not always going to be available um, every night for a Bible study. And most people don't get together and do a Bible study, but once a week at the most. So I know I see y'all at least once a week and sometimes two and three times. It's just according to how my week is going. Um, yesterday, I've just been lazy to tell you the truth. Ye yesterday, the weather, I don't know what it was, but I just didn't have a really, I didn't feel that good yesterday. But me and Chris um, met my brother out in Collar Valley, and we field measured the old church. I can remember going to that church when I was a little bitty girl, and there was an outhouse, y'all, and I remember that. And I had to be tiny. But I can remember going out there to that outhouse. Um, I guess because it's such a strange thing, you're going to remember it, you know, because we didn't have an outhouse at home. Um, but anyway, me and my brother did a lot of field measurements on the church because he's wanting to do a few, you know, renovations and stuff to the church. 
So y'all keep him in the church in your prayers, and I'm hoping they get to do a few things. There's a few things they need to do. And um, like one is make a couple of the bathrooms handicap accessible. Um, he would like to put a ramp in the, on the interior to go to the back so that the handicapped do, do not have to go around the building to get into the fellowship hall. Um, there's just different things. So me and Chris and him had fun um, yesterday morning measuring the entire church. And that was a lot of, it really was pretty fun. So, um, I've got to put that on paper for him and the church this week sometime. Um, but as I've been thinking about the lessons, one thing that I really do like this Bible that I use. Now, y'all know I'm a Bible person. I'm nuts about Bibles. And this Bible is the wo Woman's Study Bible and Women's Study Bible, I guess you would say. And, um, and it is a New King James Version signature series, and it's pretty expensive and pricey to buy. So I don't expect y'all to go buy one. But what I'm thinking about doing, because I tell you what changed my life more than anything, more than anything I've ever done that changed my life, more than cancer or getting married or having children, was reading the Bible from front to back. And yes, that's the way I read it. I didn't read it like in order that it's written. I read it from front to back. And it changed me a lot. And um, I was thinking about since we're together, if we could hold each other a little bit accountable to reading some scripture, it would be really nice. And even if you don't read it, um, I still encourage you to tune in because I'm going to hit the highlights. So what I want to start doing, and I want to start in Genesis, and I know this is not January the 1st, and this is not a New Year's resolution, so maybe we'll keep it. But today is, I believe it's uh, September the 3rd. It's just as good a day as any other day. If it were up to the Lord, he'd say today is the day, right? So I am going to uh, start reading and talking about uh, the book of Genesis. And I'm not going to read the whole book of Genesis to you, of course. But I'm going to talk about uh, Genesis and the different things that happen in Gen Genesis. And the things that uh, God brings to, m to my mind to, to talk about, okay, as I read the scripture. And um, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be neat. If you've really never took the challenge and done that, I will say that Genesis is one of my very favorite books in the Bible because there's so much there. It is like a soap opera on steroids. So, uh, what blows my mind about people in the world is they have such a hard time wanting to read the, the Bible but they find TV shows and soap operas and different things very interesting because they think they're very risque or whatever. Well, let me just say this. The Bible has a lot of stuff in it. It's not, it's, there's a lot of wild things in the Bible. Really and truly, as far as I'm concerned, and y'all can disagree with me if you want to, but people have never really changed. People were just as bad in this Old Testament as they are today. And you know, everybody says the world gets worse and it gets worse, in which it does um, in different areas. But in some areas of the world, it's always been bad and it's never changed. And for the most part, man has always been the same and we've always struggled with the same types of sin. Um, and it's, it's never been any different, really. And as a... Uh, Oh, Solomon said, you know, there's nothing under the sun that hasn't happened. It's just stuff that happens over and over, and, and that's the truth. So, we're going to start in Genesis, and we're going to start talking about Genesis. And um, so, the first thing that my Bible does is it talks about the creation of a woman, okay? Because this is a women's study Bible, and I know I have guys that watch and they need to know about a woman just as much as us women do. So, if you're a real Southern man, I've been told there's a couple of real Southern men that watch, that's great too. 
uh, there'll be plenty of it for us to talk about. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to touch base. I'm just going to read, uh, one of the, I'm going to read a couple of lines out of this lady that has outlined this Bible. She's a really smart, uh, sweet woman who for a very long time had a hard time with a woman not being completely equal with a man and um she finally got over it um and it's not that we're not equal anyway anyway it's that man has the he is has dominion over us and yes he does if you don't like it then you know Talk to God about it, because God's the one that set it up. But um, she finally got over that, and after she got over that, she was um, led by the Lord to um, put this Bible together, and it's a really nice piece of work. So, um, now, of course, she didn't write the scripture, but you know the study material. She says that... Um, God identified himself as a identify himself as a helper to Israel. So she says that God actually identifies himself as a helper. And then he gives man a helper, the woman. Okay? And she says that um, as a helper to the man, the woman became his partner spiritually in the overwhelming task of obedience to God. And dominion over the earth. She was also to be a vital part of extending the generations. Which, you know, having the children. Um, it says the woman, as ultimate friend to the man, would bring him comfort and fellowship. No one else could encourage and inspire him as she was created to do. The phrase, comparable to him... Uh, corresponds to what is in front of him occurs only in verses 18 and 20, emphasizing that the commonality of the man and the woman um, designed as the perfect counterpart for the man. The woman was neither inferior or superior, but she was alike and equal to the man in her personhood while different and unique in her function. Okay? So, um, she goes on and talks about the man and woman were both created in God's image. Just as man was formed from the earth, woman was formed from the man. And she corresponds perfectly to the man, the same flesh and blood and in the image of God, just as the man equal to him in every way. By the creative, by the creative act itself, she is inseparably linked to the man. The unity of the race is assured. The woman's dignity and worth is affirmed. The foundation for Christian marriage is set forth in a memorable way. So um, she talks about um, the creation of a woman and how wonderful being a woman really is and how special um, that we are made, very special. Um, we are uniquely made for the man. And even if the man... Um, if we were formed from the man, and the man has dominion, or, you know, superiority, I guess is what you would say, we're still beautifully and uniquely and wonderfully made. And when a man and a woman come together and they do what God has intended them to do, um, and they respect each other and love each other, and she is actually his helper and best friend, there's no beautiful, more beautiful union on the face of the earth than a man and a woman. So much so that God describes the relationships between him and his children um, just like a father and a child. And it's so much so that the church for Jesus Christ is called his bride. Now, if for some reason you feel like the union of the man and the woman is something other than that or has been taught to be something other than that to you or the man had too much um, 
was dominant and mean to a woman, that's totally wrong. Okay, that's not how it's supposed to work. Do you think Jesus Christ would be mean to the church? Do you think Jesus Christ would command the church to serve him? He actually did opposite that, didn't he? He served the disciples and he wanted to be the servant. And so never believe for one second that God's plan was made that way because it wasn't. It was twisted by, by men and some, maybe even, I don't know, but it was twisted into something that um, someone else wanted it to be, but not the plan that God desired for it to be. So remember that. So if you um, are kind of unsure about it, you know, you can always ask me some questions, but God did not intend by any means for a man to treat a woman with disrespect. Um, he's supposed to love her just like Christ loved the church. So um, that's the first thing we're going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to start reading in Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll just start with four chapters. Uh, today is Tuesday. So since it's Tuesday, I'm going to come back on Thursday, and we're going to talk about the first four chapters of Genesis. And I'm sure there's plenty to talk about. So we'll hit the highlights. And um, I hope that you'll take the time out to do that. If you don't like to read or you can't see well, then download the Audible uh, Bible. It's a little harder to use because most of the Audible Bibles do not show you a table of contents. They, they are listed by chapters. And the good thing about us start with Genesis chapter 1. It will be chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Let's say you jump to Romans. It would be maybe uh, probably around chapter 1077. See, we're not going to do that. We're going to start at the beginning. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow, even if you are using the Audible Bible. Okay, so I'll tell you every time we meet, um, I'll try to tell you what chapter it is in, in Genesis or where it is in the Bible. And I'll also tell you what chapter on the Audible Bible it should be in case you do want to listen that way. It's really nice to listen to an Audible Bible. A lot of them have um, music and, you know, effects behind them so you can hear the sheep and the goats and the uh, different things happening behind the scenes. It's really nice to close your eyes and lean back and listen to an audible Bible. I think um, it does, it's just different. So um, you can decide which one you like the best and which one you want to do the best. Um, but there are millions of free apps for Bibles on your, not millions, but plenty of free apps for audible Bibles and um regular Bibles, and normally I do reference my King James Version or the New King James Version. Sometimes I do re reference an ESV as well, so um, those are typically what I'd be reading from uh, during our studies. I enjoyed seeing May so much this weekend. Um, she was sick with a sinus infection, I'm sure, because she's in a different place in the vent they have individual air conditioning units, and I told her, put it in a work order, tell them to come service it, put you in a new filter. Um, so I need to call her tonight and make sure she does that because she's already got a, uh, inf you know, like a cold and stuff. And I know that's what it's from. Just being in a different environment. Um, we'll all keep everybody in our prayers from the hurricanes and the families that lost all those loved ones um, in that fire out, um, I believe that was in California, for the divers. And uh, I know we've got a couple of viewers who have family members that are really sick, so I'm sure we have plenty of unspoken requests as well. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for joining in and being a part of Real Southern Woman and um, this part of who I am that God has laid on my heart to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone um, and not hoard it away. Um, I hope that you'll respect that and I hope to see you again. Okay. 
Uh, we're going to say our prayers, and um, I guess that's it. I was just sitting here looking at May's little snake. She has a snake in this room, and he has not eaten, and she did not go get him a mouse. And so tomorrow, I have definitely got to feed him. Maybe after prayer's over, if he's out, I'll show him to y'all. He's really, really cute. His name is Thor. I mean, he's not a big snake. He's a very, if he bit you, it wouldn't even hurt snake, you know. So we're going to say our prayers. My little dog's in there barking. Um, and I guess that's it for tonight, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for um, today. And we thank you for your son. And we thank you for um, this plan that you've put together, Lord, for uh, your creation and that you created the man and then you created the woman to be his helper. And I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us, whether we be a man or a woman, would treat each other with respect and like best friends as you would have us do um, for your divine will because that's what your divine will would be. I know that um, the being mean to somebody and being dominant over them is really um, creates anger and resentment and, and, and that really just becomes, turns into sin. And I know that doesn't have anything to do with you. So may we treat each other with respect, love each other, and have respect for each other and um, try to hold our tongues when we know that our tongues are going to say something we shouldn't say. Um, just be with us each and every day for everyone that's around us so that we can reflect your love instead of um, our fleshly desires. And just be with everyone during the storm and help us all to continue to pray um, for those in need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay. Let's just see if he's out. Y'all may want to and you may not want to, but he was out the other day. And let's see if he is. Yes, he is. No, I don't see him. He's usually out when he's hungry. And lots of times, like there's his little hole. He'll like stick his head up out of the hole. And just kind of sit there and wait till I drop him in a mouse. And then he can get a bite to eat. But he's not out. And I'm not going to dig him out for y'all. So let me see if he's right here. He's usually right here where the, um, I say that, then I start digging. He's usually right here where the um, heater is. Aha! Found him. He's mad. He's mad because he's hungry. Oh, I got him by the head. <laughs> Here he is. Thor, you're not being very nice tonight. You're showing off. There he goes. Don't take him but a minute to, to leave us, does it? I'm crazy. Most people will be scared of him, but I'm not. He's a snake. Everybody's so scared of snakes that they don't even have legs, for heaven's sakes. Why are, why are people so scared of snakes? Um, but anyway, y'all have a good night, and I guess I'll go watch TV with my husband. Of course, all he's done is watch ball. Y'all, I think Friday night, or was it Saturday? There were five games on. I was like, for help. I, I'm playing. I just got in the shower and and took all my makeup off and got comfortable before I before I came in here and talked to y'all because y'all were like my family. Y'all were like my sisters and brothers. So it, I don't have to get all fancied up for y'all. I hope y'all have a good night and I'm really gonna try to do um, that fried uh, okra gumbo tomorrow. It's gonna be really good. So we'll see if I can get that on for y'all. I'm sure it'll be tomorrow evening if I do it. Bye, y'all. Love ya.